Awesome, guys. Well, today I am excited to bring onto the podcast my friend Jeremy Netting. Jeremy, thanks for joining me today. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I'm yeah. excited to talk to Jeremy. So um, Jeremy and his wife, Kristen, are in our Family Inc. Uh, community, and they have been working on um, a business with their six sons. Um, yeah. And they also, we also got to hang out with them in Orlando for our family teams camp. And so we got to know them. And in the midst of that time, I was just chatting with Jeremy and he brought up, um, I don't know what conversation we're having, but uh, he brought up that he had started a, a family kickball league. And um, I was like, what? Tell me about that. And so the deeper we got into this conversation, the more curious I became. And the reason why I'm so interested in this topic is that I in in uh, in the conversations we've had about family teams everywhere we've gone <clears throat> you know we make the analogy of like fathers being like coaches and um and one of probably one of the biggest questions we get from people is what about sports especially when they have larger families it's one thing you have one or two kids and you know you you put your kids in sports and you can still kind of you know maybe manage that but you have three four five six kids like the nettings have it starts to get a little crazy um, but there's so many advantages to having your kids in sports and especially you're talking about family teams. And so I don't know of any more um, sort of uh, sort of stark tension that I've ever heard people feel than on one hand, they want to build a family team. Uh, on the other hand, they can't afford the time it takes to enroll their kids in sports and they sense the tension, right? Because if your kids are in teams, they can really learn a lot about team and they can experience a lot of the, the values of team that they could bring into the family. But if you do that, you end up sacrificing so much time and you're, all your kids are going so many different directions that you lose any kind of sense of cohesion. And so this, this tension is so profound for so many families. And so we, we've tried to figure this out for years and you know we've gotten into various sports that really can scale you know across age groups like tennis and taekwondo and pickleball. But the one thing that it always seemed to lack is where we're all playing on the same team at the same time. That's hard to do <laughs> with those sports, right? Um, they, they, you don't really have the same experience. You have being on like a team sport team all together. But I'm like, that's, you can't do that, right? You can't have kids. There's too many, there's too many questions, too many age groups, too many to actually play in any kind of competitive sense all on the same team at the same time that's not possible that's what i thought until i had this conversation with jeremy <laughs> i tried my best to pick apart his strategy for doing this and i was unable to do it i think he's pulled it off and so we're going to talk about this so jeremy just i want to start with just talking through your story you know what caused you uh to to think of this idea uh, and then we're going to get into the details so you guys can hear like the rules and and the and how to actually pull this off if you're interested. But yeah, take us back, Jeremy, to to where where this came from. Yeah, I mean it it was just like you said. I mean we were we were at the point we had six kids, but we have four kids playing soccer on four different teams, hmm. all through the like the community soccer league, and it was like you don't think about it when you sign up and the time commitment that it is. But there was, I mean, it's a, there we had practices four nights a week. We were gone all day Saturday with games. It was like Kristen would take two kids one direction. I would take two kids one direction. I even was coaching for a long time just to be a part of being with the kids. But it just, and then it just got like halfway through the season. The last season we played, it just, it wore us out. And just, we were like, we didn't have any time for, family meals like we were gone every evening and it just got so overwhelming that we were just like we have got to find something else <laughs> that's awesome and so yeah. um what do they say that uh, necessity is the mother of invention so yes so yeah so you started to think about something did you look around first for a solution before you you came up with this one um i tried i i just kept brainstorming game like different games that any age could play and um being like with six boys it has to be they need competitive they need that yeah. competitive nature there i mean they they compete in everything they do in our house like everything is a competition 
And so we couldn't just, we didn't feel like we could just eliminate that at all. Like there had to be something yeah. out there. Nice. So, so you looked around and, and what, when did the kickball idea sort of first spark for you? Um, I kind of just was just brainstorming different games. Like how could, could we do baseball? Could we do like, they're very into football. And it was just like, how do you get younger kids? I mean, our kids age range is three to 16. And so how can you get all six kids involved in a mm. sport? And kickball was the one thing I could come up with that would, uh, allow for everybody with just some, we didn't change the rules too much, but just with some slight changes, you could really get everybody involved, man. So yeah, there, there's kind of two elements I, I want to kind of tease out how you actually pulled this off. So you decided kickball. That's something that maybe we could we could with a few adjustments. And so th there's there's a there's two questions I think people are going to ask immediately that I know you had to deal with in order to make this happen. So um, one is that different families have different size, di different age kids, and so. Um, and so it seems like it seems impossible to solve that problem. Uh, and then there's that, you know, in order to, to actually compete against another team, right? So that's problem number one that I, I've, I've never been able to solve. And then problem number two is, is when you have even on your own team, kids at different, uh, different ages and stages, how did, how does it, how does it stay competitive? How does it not bore the older kids out of their mind or crush the spirit of the younger kids? So, so you've thought about both of these problems and let's maybe take them up one at a time. So the first is how did you solve the problem of competing against an other families that might be totally different, you know, age range than your family? Kind of walk um, us so we them. start, yeah. So we started out with, um, the first season we did, we had four families that played. And so it was small, but it it worked out really well. So we can we pair each family up with another family. So you have um at least two families uh on a, one team. They kick and they play the field together against two other families. And we didn't really sizes weren't important. Like so so one team may have had 12 people on it another team may have eight but then so then every week we rotated you changed who your partner was, who your family was so you got to play with a different family each week and then play against different families each week and so it kind of it worked itself out in the end like some weeks you would have a bunch of older kids on your team and some weeks you'd have a bunch of little kids on your team but it kind of over the course of a season it worked itself out yeah. So, so part of what, so part of what Jeremy did in this is, so is, so you, you are, you're always combining with a different family. So it's not just your family competing against another family. It's, it's you plus a partnering family on one team competing against another two families that are partnering together on the opposite team. So if you have four families competing, then, then you're, and you're switching partnering families, but didn't you, so isn't there, what's the score component in terms of like the whole season? Yeah. So, yeah. So each week you would keep your score for your family. So you and another family scored 10, you would get 10 points. Both families would get 10. And if the other team fam two families scored 15, they would get 15. Well, then the next week you're with a different family. And so you would score, you would have your 10 from the week before plus whatever you scored that week. So the, that kind of rotated through who you were playing with, you got, and then that added up the scores throughout the season yes and so we had one family that would win at the end so you can so so this really allows to kind of moderate the you know the abilities of maybe one particularly athletic family they're constantly you know being paired up with other families um that might be giving them a handicap you know or whatever but this sort of begins to, to create the even even out uh the situation and then you're tracking your family score so that you are you are sort of tracking with your team, even though you're being paired up with other families. I love that yeah. strategy. And yeah. then, uh, yeah. and then if you, if you have a family that has mostly younger children playing against a family with mostly older children, uh, let's say you paired up two together that both have younger. So you mentioned that part of what starts to moderate this is you've got two more innovations. One is the parents then would get more at bats, right? Correct. Yeah. So yeah, if you have a, and that's, that's something we found that larger families kind of, 
there is some disadvantage to that because the parents are, the dads are up there kicking. If you have two families of four, <laughs> you only have eight people. The dads are up there kicking every eight people, you know, yes. six or seven times. So I love does. that because that, that, that it's like you could you could imagine going up against the nettings with their six boys and you're like, oh, my gosh, with, you know, my three kids, two daughters, that are, you know, and so like, I, how are you ever going to, you know, even with you Paris with another family, but this this kind of can get really both the husband and wife, you they both are are participating in most in, in the league. Yeah, yeah, everybody, everybody, everybody participates. So and actually for my wife, Kristen. She is the least competitive person I know. She <laughs> actually has had a, she has enjoyed playing so much. Like mm. just being out, I think just being out there with everybody and being able to do it all together is mm. the win for her. That's so awesome, man. And to have her, I can imagine what, I, I can't imagine what it's like to have her six sons just all cheering her on <laughs> yeah. in a competitive sport. I love it. That's great. Yeah. Oh man. So. So, okay. So, so that, that's one of the things you had to solve. And so we solve it by every family has its own score that sort of accumulates over the season. Yep. Um, and the season is you, you ended up with about how many, how many games? We do about eight weeks right now. So eight weeks, it lasts okay, so about two months. So about a two month season, um, you're all showing now. And now you have, you started with four, you can, it seems like four is sort of like a beginner number and now you've moved yep. to eight. Eight. Yeah. So last, last, uh, this last fall, we had eight teams playing. So we actually broke it into two fields. Okay. And then we had two games going on at one time. And we had, uh, so then it was, you played with every family one time was on your team against another family. Okay. I got uh, two other families. Yeah. So that allows you to cycle through the entire. So you, you have, man, there's so many advantages to this because you're also getting to know all those other families. Yeah. Like you're playing on a team with all the other seven families. Yeah. It really uh, helps build community. And, yeah. Uh, so what, what, what is any, you, you find a place with like maybe two baseball diamonds that are kind of next to each other. Is that how you, um, we're actually just using the field behind the church that we attend. Oh, nice. So okay. when we just, we go out, we paint lines on it, put bases okay. out so yeah so put put each game at like the two corners of the field yeah yeah okay and nice so the outfields kind of share but it, it, what day of the week do you guys usually do this um we've done it most on thursday nights on thursday nights okay wow yeah. so we've rotated okay. between tuesdays and thursdays okay. some see some because we do it in the spring and in the fall so you do a do a it's a two-month sort of season in the spring two-month season in the fall both with uh, eight, eight families um, on a Tuesday or Thursday evening. And and so you guys show up about how long does the whole uh, competition usually take? Uh, we try to keep it to about an hour. And okay. it normally lasts that long. So simple. Yeah. yeah. And then so, is it, what, what what's a, what's an actual game? Do you, is it a certain number of innings? We do um, seven innings. Seven innings. Then, yep. Do you do just, a three three outs or do you do yep, the, through the lineup? Just three outs and okay, uh, just like a normal kickball league would be three outs and okay. seven innings and nice. We do uh, limit each inning if so. If you have a massive team, we you, you can always score ten runs in an inning. Okay, max out of ten. So that that <laughs> yeah. So that way, if you do have one, but we found it pretty. It levels itself out pretty well. So awesome. Now I want to get into the littles. So part of the genius of this idea is, you know, what do you do with, with like babies or really young children? They can't possibly pick kick, play kickball. So how did you guys handle having little kids in a family? So we, I picked the age of five and under and okay. cause that's, cause I was just looking at our kids. And so we have a three at the time we had a three-year-old and a five-year-old. So, the rules for them is they're they get up every at bats their turn and they get to kick the ball and they get to run to first. They can't okay. get out and they just get to run, kick the ball and run because that's what they love to do. So they are they can't get out at all, but they have to be pushed by the, the player behind them. Okay. So they can run to first and then they stay at first, the person gets up behind them, they kick, they can run one base ahead of the person behind them. So if that person kicks a double that the under five kid can run all the way to third without getting out. 
Okay. So, nice. but if if the person behind them gets out, then they have to wait till another player comes up and pushes them all the way around the bases. Got it. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so th- so there's that creates obviously an advantage when you have a young <laughs> young kid because now you've got basically a ghost runner running around the bases that can't be taken out that's going to score a run for your for your team assuming somebody behind them um can push them all the way to home yep so we did add we have a couple families with uh even littler kids so we added a stroller rule okay so if you have a baby and you want to and my brother-in-law does they uh you can push a stroller around the bases and it's an extra point if it gets all the way home (laughs) And it can, and if that guy gets out, does his stroller get out too? No, the stroller can stay and at the base, and the person that's coming up behind you can pick up the stroller and keep pushing. No it to way. The base. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, some of the kids in the stroller love it. It's oh, hilarious. I bet they're just sitting there, like getting all of a sudden they get pushed by somebody, one of their siblings, and you know, and you're going yeah. for a double run basically if you can yeah. get that stroller all the way around. Yeah. So. Yeah, and running, well, running with a stroller is pretty funny sometimes. Man, awesome! So th- those are the basic rules. Any other rules that that have that you've? Um, we did add if you're under ten, if you're so if you're between five and ten, um, you can't be caught out on a kick. Okay. Because I I was trying to think like most kids that age are going to kick the ball in the air. Yeah. They can't kick it that far, and another somebody's going to catch it every time. And they're just not going to, that's not going to be fun for them. So they get to kick the ball. If it's caught, they still get to run to first. They can still get out going to first, but mm. they have to be. So every, They'd be thrown their out kick of... is considered, yeah, their kick okay. is considered a ground ball, no okay. matter what. I got it. So Yeah, I, I love this because I, I think, I think these rules, again, they're going to be a little unusual for people that are, <laughs> you know, used to uh, same age you know, group yeah. sports, but if you're trying to design a sport that is both competitive and involves the entire family, the real key, and I think you've discovered this, it seems like is, is you got to have a few special rules that make it fun for everybody. And as long as everyone's signing up for that, you know, understands that that's the real goal, then you can still have a really competitive game and, and, uh, and have kids all the way down to in strollers participate, which is amazing. Yeah, that's so so cool. Now, what, what's what's the vibe like? Like in terms of like dads and moms and coaching and kids and like talk to me. Like what what's uh, it? It it it's it's swayed both directions. Like you have like it's you have a lot of dads out there coaching their kids, kind of teaching them how to play, what to do when they get the ball and they throw it to the wrong base, or it's. There's a lot of coaching going on, and you're right there on the field with them, coaching them. So it's that's yeah. a great aspect of this. And then there is there has been a couple points where the dads and the older kids have gotten very competitive, and it's <laughs> and it's gotten a little little much. So we did add this year. We are gonna like have something called the spirit of the game, mm. where we kind of have the dads and sign something that says, you know, we understand this is competitive, but this is more for <laughs> various children and yes. So well, that's, a, yeah. th- that actually is a good sign. You know, it, when, 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 when people get that intense about a game, you can tell they believe that it's a real competition. Um, yeah, but you do have to then, you know, moderate like, Hey guys, we've got to remember why we're doing this. So we're, we're going to experience and enjoy a really challenging competition, but keep, keep, like we're trying to create a family, you know, like experience that's positive. So that's great. Right. Yeah. Have, have you guys done other things to like do celebrations? How, how, how does like a, like a season look for you guys? Any other things you've done to like kick it off or to end or. Um, at the end we'll normally. So last time we had eight teams. So we played seven weeks of um, round Robin play where you play with everybody. And then, so we let the two, the last week we let the, Two top teams who had the most points, they played against each other, but they got to pick their pick their family as their teammate. So okay. whoever they wanted to play as their teammate, they got to pick their family. And then they played for like the championship. Nice. And then we'd just have like a pizza party afterwards and stuff and just kind of hang out. 
Okay. So, oh. so the eighth week is a little bit more of a championship round with a party at the end and yeah. celebrating the season. Yep. Did you guys give anything to the the winning team? <laughs> so we have a trophy. Um, <laughs> my kids started chanting. Uh, so when a dad would get up and kick, they would call him the beefy bomber. <laughs> <laughs> and so we found a bomb trophy on Amazon that we get and we call it the beefy bomber award. <laughs> nice. So you, you would present that to the winning dad of our family and they would get to keep yep. the beefy bomber for, for the, uh, until the next season. Yeah. Yep. So that's awesome. Very cool. Yeah. Well, any, any other details, Jeremy, that might be helpful for someone who's like, Ooh, man, I think I'm going to start, start a league of kickball. Um, just like, f- just let it be small to begin with. Like four teams worked out really well. Four families worked out really well the first season. Like you played, actually played with everybody twice. Um, it kind of, it, it just kind of went through a progression and kind of, gave us the opportunity to see how it worked and how everybody kind of played together. And I mean, for us, I mean, this is the biggest benefit for us is this is one night a week. Yeah. Like one night we're still together as a family that night. We're not gone four nights a week for practices. We're not gone all day Saturday with games. It's that's been one of the real benefits that we've seen from this. Yeah, man, that's awesome. So and it seems like when you guys had to go from four uh four teams to eight, there's gotta be a bit of a like an intense recruitment because you need to get to eight, right, to really make this work. Yeah, we did we did play a season with six kind of in between there. And okay. we just kind of kind of worked it together and worked it out. Um we do we do charge fifty dollars to play. Okay. That but we get we provide t shirts for everybody with your name, your family, any name you want on the back of your shirt. And everybody gets to pick their color, um, and then that that kind of gives it a commitment. Like you're yeah. going to show up because, like, if a family doesn't show up, it kind of puts a strain on yes. on the whole game. So we figured we needed some kind of some kind of commitment. So yeah. and we figured like fifty dollars for a sport that your whole family can play. I mean, Super most rec reason. leagues are most rec leagues are way more than that per kid. Yes, man. Yeah. I mean, I would love to see if somebody wants to, I, I'm going to add this uh, into the, we're going to release on the podcast, but also into the family Inc library. Cause I, if somebody wants to do this as a side hustle or I just would love to see, uh, I know we got several families that have more sports related um, businesses that they're starting. I'm like, man, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta like pour some gasoline on this thing. This is, this is an, this would be such an amazing culture shifter for I think so many communities to begin to even see something like this, like what a family can compete together. Like, man, that that's that, that in itself, I think could flip, uh, you know, some paradigms about family and sports and team. Yeah. It has really changed our, like our kids, they don't even act like the first time we told them that we were going to stop playing soccer. They was pretty upset about it. And, uh, but, they have not asked since we started playing kickball. They have not asked about playing soccer. They actually asked, <laughs> Hey, when's kickball starting? Nice. So yeah, that, that's, this could be kind of like gateway. If you've got a kid who's just really into their individual sport, but it's like ripping your family apart too much, you know, too much time to, you know, you know, get, get a kickball league going and see if, see if this scratches that itch. And, you know, I think for so many families, like they, they, and it's 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 legitimate. They need to be in, involved in something like physical, competitive, yeah. team based. All those things are such good values. But man, to do this in a way that actually allows you to come together as a family and for moms and dads to get to coach their their kids, this is awesome. So yeah. cool. And uh, you guys put up put together a website. I think it has the rules. What, yeah. What's the URL, Jeremy? Uh, family uh, familykickball dot com. Familykickball dot com. All right, guys. So familykickball.com. If you guys go there, um, this is this is for the league that uh the nettings have started. So this isn't for you to sign up if you live don't live uh <laughs> in Ohio like they do. But if you're in um, but you can see the rules. There's a PDF of all the rules that Jeremy came up with. Um, 
So they got the standard kickball rules and then the under five rule, the five to 10 year old rule, the babies and strollers rule all bulleted out for you. So if you wanted to uh, print this out and, you know, show this to other families and get them on board and help, you know, you guys see this and yeah, I'm, I'm excited. And I think I would love to see this just keep, keep growing and keep evolving. And um, yeah, this is, I, I, this is the best seed of a family sport uh, idea I've, I've heard. So I'm super excited uh, to see people do this. So any, any last things, Jeremy, you would add to anything that might be helpful? Um, No, I think that's it. Cool. So, man, well, uh, thanks so much for both coming up with this <laughs> and, uh, and be willing to share this. This is, this is going to be great. So, um, and if you, yeah, there's also a Facebook page. So if you're, if you're doing, you start your own league, let, uh, let the nettings know what you're doing. I'd love for, for Jeremy and Kristen to get to see this spread and, I hope I hope it does. May uh, may you guys have fun, and I I, I want to see one start down here in Northern Kentucky. Um, if anybody has any any ideas, let me know. I'll uh, I'll bring my family, and we'll we'll get this thing rocking here. Nice, so, awesome. Thanks, Jeremy, so much for yep. talking to me about this. Thank you.